I just had my son and it was Cinco de Mayo. It was my first time out. I was gonna enjoy my first margarita and we're at a bar. And this girl I can hear as I'm going to the bathroom is like, oh my God, she brought her baby to a bar? Like what kind of mom is she? And I come out of the bathroom with like him on my chest to sleep. I was like, you got a problem with me? No. Like, you're not gonna tell me. I literally had my hands like this. All I see is blessings on blessings, yeah. I see the blessings coming our way, our way, our way. All right, so I have Rebecca, who I call Becky Minkoff, in the building. Welcome to the Cool Mom Code podcast. I am so excited for this conversation. I really am. I am too. I, I was getting jealous of all your guests, so I was excited <laughs> when we finally made it happen. Listen, I've listened to your podcast. I've obviously been, we're friends, so whoever doesn't know, Becky and I also are good friends. I love this woman very dearly, um, but also I've respected you for a very long time and admired you for a very long time, and even as a model, you know, I always knew you as a designer never as a real person. <laughs> so <laughs> when when I finally met you and I was like, oh my goodness, this woman is doing it all. Like, I mean all. And I feel like you instantly became one of like my... I really would say like the women mothers who inspire me, who I look up to. I, I really do. And I say that with all sincerity and I don't say that to everyone. So whoever listens to this podcast knows oh, that's not you. something I say all the time. With that being said, I want to take it back for a second because you're originally from San Diego. You yeah. moved to Florida, which if anyone's looking at her background right now on YouTube, she's in beautiful Florida. That's why she looks so much brighter than me. <laughs> I mean, it's like raining in LA and I'm like, Ooh, boo, but you're, you moved to Florida. And then where do we find ourselves in New York of all places? We found ourselves in New York. So we moved to Florida when I was nine and I hated it. And I vowed like to leave in the minute I could. So at 18, I moved to New York. I had gotten an internship with a designer through a, a friend of my brother's. And I felt like I knew I wanted to be in fashion. It was all I could think about. And I was like, this is where it's all happening. So let's just go. And, you know, I got the pressure from not my parents because they weren't traditional, but my aunt to like, go to college. You'll never be a success if you don't do that. But I was like, I had a job and I was working in the industry and I just felt like that was my calling. And from there, I got hired by them. I ended up working there for three years. And then I naively was like, I know what I'm doing at 21. I'm going to start my own company. Um, so I got a college education of lots of mistakes and failures for a good four years. Um, and then the bag that I did at 2005 is what really put me on the map. So when you started your own company at 21 or whatever, right, that young age, did you start, it was literally Rebecca Minkoff, that was the name you started with your name? That was the name. And I did that because I worked for designer and I hated, I hated that I was working so hard. And at the end of the day, it wasn't my name and it wasn't my decision at the, you know, like there were so many things I said, if I'm going to work this hard in this many hours, it's my fucking name. Can I swear on this mm -hmm. podcast? Yes, you can girl, okay. girl. Bye. Um, <laughs> so I just felt like, you know what? I, I, I wanted to be me. Who's no, not blah by Rebecca Minkoff or, you know, and I felt like what I was offering to a woman was someone who was going through what I was going through in the same age and whatever. So hiding behind a brand name, not that all people do this, but hiding behind a name that, ha you know, that would have to be explained didn't seem to fit. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I mean, and you also very interestingly enough, went into business with your brother. I did. So for the first four years, I had clothing and I made a nice $60,000 dent in a credit card that my my father had co-signed but refused to pay. Uh -huh. And I was doing like the $35 a month payments. So your your payments will be paid off in That's 170 right. years. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know how I was going to pay it off. So when I saw some heat around the bag, I actually called my dad. I was like, I'm not your degenerate daughter anymore. Like I figured it out. Like people want the bag. He was like, oh no, I'm scared. You're never going to pay me back. And I'm going to have to take over these credit card payments. 
Uh and, uh, you know, try your brother, he might help you. So in the beginning, you know, my calls were for advice and loans and support. And when my brother began to see the, the, you know, double tripling of the business and, uh, the heat around it and the women desiring it and the press, he was like, all right, let's, let's formalize this. Like we're going into business together. Oh, wow. I mean, for your brother to step into that type of role with you, I think also shows a lot about your relationship with each other and your belief in one another, but is it hard working with your brother? Was that impossible? Um, so we don't work together anymore, but I'd say for 18 years we did. So I'd say the first, let's go with the first five years was like the honeymoon. Like you're awesome. <laughs> you're awesome. I love you. I love you too. Um, and then when things got really real and big and stressful, mm-hmm. it got really big and stressful between us. Mm. And I think that when you have a partner who you're related to, who knows your buttons, you know, you go places where you would never go. Like if you and I started a business, we, there are places we just wouldn't go, right? Right. We wouldn't know as, to go that way. Yeah. We wouldn't know to go that way. We wouldn't know your, our triggers, but we each knew each other's triggers. So we definitely uh, had some hard times. We went to couples therapy. No uh, way. You did not. We did. Yes, we did. We hired a business couples mo- mediator, if you will, to really help us because we couldn't figure it out. And there were times we were both going to my dad and, you know, or my mom, you know, it just, it didn't make sense. So mm-hmm. it definitely was hard, but at the end of the day, like I knew when I hit the pillow every night that I had someone I trusted. Right. So even though it got very hard to know that someone had my back, you know, was, was priceless. Yeah. The communication was difficult on the day to day, but knowing that the values in which you both were raised with will always be there. That's yeah. important. Yeah. That's important. And it wasn't that it was hard every day. I think we would have these cycles of time where it'd be like a hard month and then fine. And then another bump. And then, you know, how, it just depended on what was going on. How was the holidays during that time though? Like when everyone gets together for family during the holidays, oh, yeah. So like, there no, was don't sit next to me. <laughs> don't you dare sit next to me. Well, there was a couple of times. So there'd be times when we were getting along and both of our spouses would be like, please stop talking about work. It's Thanksgiving. That's right. But then we really perfected the art of when we were arguing, no one would know if we were all together because our mm-hmm. kids are really close. Like right. there's no anger or anything. We just, we don't talk. And everyone else has a good time, but we're not putting our shit on everyone for it to become a, an issue. And we yeah. have we have gotten so good at that. <laughs> that would be the hardest part for me. Me and my brother would literally we'd be like, Aaron, everyone would be unhappy because <laughs> I he'd be coming at me. I'd be coming at him. I'd be like, nope, I don't care. You don't care. I don't care. I mean, it would oh just be God. like a total shit show if that were the case. But that's good. OK, so that's 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 funny. I mean, I think that working with any sibling, I think, could could be hard. It's like working with your best friend. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a hard road to go down, but when you do it, when it's great, it's great. And when it's not, it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. So when did kids come into the picture? How far along into the business did kids and Gavin uh, appear? Okay. So Gavin appeared year one. Gavin is husband, by the way. Yes. Gavin is husband. Gavin appeared year one. Um, it was me and an intern working out of my apartment, barely keeping it together. Wait a minute. Gavin's been around since year one. Yes. Gavin was going to be my meal ticket. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What? I I didn't know that. Someone can support me while I do my art. (laughs) It'll be great. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay. So he's seen it all. He has seen it all. He's seen it all where like my apartment was my office and he would come to visit because we did a long distance relationship for a year and a half. And he would be on the couch just wanting to watch like, you know, whatever you do when you're, you know, visiting someone and they have to work and TV. And my employees would be like behind him, like putting in orders and yeah, (laughs) he's seen it all. He, he even (laughs) took pity on me one sample sale season. We lost like the person in charge of the sample sale. And he like, was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll help you, babe. And like oh. came and like ran, ran wow. it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Gavin's been around. So that's also important too, right? You have someone who's there, who's supportive, who's right there in the trenches with you, but who is also seeing you grow. So when did kids come into the picture with you and Gavin? 
Okay. So my mom, when I turned like 30, she was like, Ooh, your ovaries, those eggs are going to be dusty. You better she hurry did? <laughs> And I personally wasn't ready. I very much was like, we were living, you know, our best New York City lives and we didn't have money or anything, but like it was fun and we were going out and all the things you do when you're young. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, fuck, I really love my parents and I want my kids to have a relationship with them and they're getting older. They're 32 years older than me. And so at 30, I said, let's try. Got pregnant at 31. And the minute I did, I was like, what was I so worried about? I remember being pregnant and being like texting Gavin because I didn't want to verbalize in front of the baby. Like, this was a big mistake. <laughs> Why did you have a baby? I don't like this decision and I'd like to go back. And then he came out and I was obsessed and in love. And like, I was like, oh my God, I should have started at 23. Yeah. I should have started earlier. Um, so did motherhood and just come, did it come naturally for you? It did. I mean, there was obviously like, I thought I knew how to breastfeed and I didn't. And then a Taiwanese nurse at two in the morning, like taught me, or obviously there's all the shit you don't know with your first, but mm -hmm. I would say that I very much channeled my mother's like relaxed sort of hippie energy with regards to raising my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a role I take very seriously and love very much. I wonder if people know that about you though, because you do have a very relaxed hippie vibe about you. <laughs> But on the other hand, you're like this fierce businesswoman. But I wonder if people really know that you are this like really like, honestly, guys, Becky is, she's chill. She'll get, she's a girl's girl. So she'll get into it with you. But yet she also knows how to like talk to the guys. Like, so she could have a beer and like watch a game if she had to. Like, like she, she's just this real like chill, relaxed. <laughs> like, And anytime I've ever talked to you about parenthood, Literally, we were in the midst of COVID, the midst of COVID. Oh, yeah. And I remember having a conversation with you and you were like, girl, bye. I'm just pulling them out of school. And I was like, excuse me, what? You were like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, vaccines, this vaccines, that cool. Right. But I don't want to be forced to do what I I'm just gonna pull them out of school. It yeah. was like so many regulations. You were like, uh, you know what? I don't know. It's just not my vibe. I'm going to pull them out of school. We're just going to homeschool. And I was like, Becky, what are you talking about? You have three. <laughs> At the time, I think you had three. You had three wow. kids. I was like, are you joking? I have three kids. There's no way that they're coming home with me. And we're I wasn't homeschooling them, though. I wasn't doing it. That's why that worked, is I paid someone to do it. I mean, whatever <laughs> the case, honey, I'm telling you, I was floored. I was oh, floored. Okay. And I just felt like you just pivoted. So where is this come from where you just can pivot on a dime? And it feels from the outside looking in, even as your friend, that stress isn't really your vibe. Like, it's just, it's not something that you let overwhelm you. Okay. A couple things. I definitely get stressed. Everybody does. Um, I think there are certain, my, my husband says I'm very binary. I'm a one or a zero. And the minute I make a decision about something, you know, it, it switches and that's mm -hmm. the, like I go into action mode. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I see a lot of people spend a lot of time in the maybe right. and they get caught in it and they can't make a decision. And even in my business, you know, my brother would get caught in the maybe, and this is no disrespect to him. And I'd be like, let's move. And I'd rather move and make the mistake. Mm -hmm. Then sit in that sort of, well, what if, and do we go? Uh? So I think that for me, I just, I have to make a decision good or bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and with that particular situation, my kids were miserable in school, like miserable, like coming home, like they won't let us talk to our friends during lunch. Cause we have to have a mask on, but we can only chew and then put them at and like all this shit, we couldn't go into the building. And I was like, is this the life that I want to have my kids grow up with this, this, they're in a prison basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like, what's the ultimate happiness to my kids? And is it going to be more stressful? Yes. They're going to still be home driving me crazy. The days I work from home, I can't focus, you know, so there were a host of other issues, but to me, it was like, I got to, I got to, I guess it stressed me out more to have them miserable mm. than it did to have the stress of figuring out homeschool. Mm, I see. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it makes total sense. I mean, for us, we just was like, listen, the other, we can't even handle. So 
<laughs> for us, I, I, I know that feeling though, especially when your kids are so uncomfortable or your kids just don't understand what's happening. Your kids are as confused as you are and they don't get why, why can't I talk to my friend? What do you mean? My friend might make me sick. What do you mean? Like that. So I understand the wanting and the desire to want to change their circumstance. Right. For that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that part of me always has like a, a rebel or like, you can't tell me what to do. Like it goes down to like, I, I can give you so many examples. So when someone says you can't, or this is not allowed, I'm like, Oh, okay. Test me. Try it with me. Have you tell always been have like that? Um, probably it's grown in the last 10 years, but it's, you know, it came down to like, you can't deliver naturally in this part of the hospital or you have gestational diabetes. You can't eat this. And like, just anyone puts a rule on me and I'm like, oh no, we are figuring out a way. Okay. But wait a minute. You're saying it grew in the last 10 years, but why? Like as a mother, it's grown as a mother, the whole, like, you tell me, no, I'm going to show you that there's something else out there. I'm going to show you the rebel in me. <laughs> as a as a mother, that's where it comes from, or is it just you being um, more secure in yourself as a woman? Hmm. I will say it probably started with the watching, uh, and I wasn't pregnant at the time. I watched the business of being born. Oh my god, I did too, girl. It messed up my whole <laughs> life. Go ahead, right? keep going. Yes. <laughs> And not, you know, call me a conspiracy theorist or not. I was like, oh, this is messed up. The priorities are so not aligned to supporting women, right? Mm -hmm. And from there, you sort of peel back an onion and like where else in life are their priorities not aligned to what they say they are? And for me, it drives me crazy. So whenever, now I get sheer joy when I get to break a rule or push back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, or, or even like when I was, pregnant. No, I just had my son and it was Cinco de Mayo. It was my first time out. I was going to enjoy my first margarita and we're at a bar. And this girl I can hear as I'm going to the bathroom is like, Oh my God, she brought her baby to a bar. Like what kind of mom is she? And I come out of the bathroom with like him on my chest asleep. I was like, you got a problem with me. No, like, you're not going to tell me. I literally had my hands like this. <laughs> and then I was, I was like, <laughs> Yeah. So I just, I don't like, I don't like to be told you can't do things. It pisses me off. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I always tell myself too, the day I meet Ricky Lake, she's not going to be able to walk away because I'm going to have so much to say to this woman. Can it's we just I, her together. I mean, I watched the business of being born and I feel like it totally transformed. Once again, I didn't have kids at the time. I watched the business of being born and I feel like it transformed how I thought I don't know, just like everything, it, it transformed what I thought my labor birth process as a mother, becoming a mother would even yeah. look like, you yeah. know, before watching that film. And I think it's just so wild. It transformed how I had my children. Yep, for sure. It transformed how I had mine. And even, you know, I haven't watched her documentary about birth control, but it's supposed to be incredible. And I think it's, I'm hoping it does the same for young women. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, no one's birth control. Just watch. It's going to go down afterwards <laughs> after watching it. I can only imagine how what the fact she's going to give you. The oh fact God. that she gave you the business of being born, she said, um, I don't even know what the percentage was, but it was like, I don't know, like 80 something percent or 75 or some crazy number at the time where I was like, are you kidding me? Of doctors on Fridays at five o'clock. Yeah. That's when the increase, the most C-sections were done because they wanted to get to their golf game or wanted to get to their weekends. And I was like, are you joking? Are you joking? That right there hit I me know. like a ton of bricks. This episode is sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Choosing Green Chef means choosing real, wholesome foods that don't just fill you up, but also support a healthy lifestyle. Look, it's more than just satisfying hunger. It's about feeling good with every bite. Make this year's resolution a breeze. Build healthy habits the easy way in 2024 with nutritious recipes from the number one meal kit for clean eating. Listen, Green Chef offers unique farm fresh ingredients, organic whole fruits and veggies and premium proteins. 
I'm currently trying the Mediterranean meal plan and so far it's been a breeze. I love the organic, clean ingredients. I also love that I don't have to find new recipes to follow for Mediterranean meals and everything is provided for me. Go to greenchef.com slash 60coolmom and use code 60coolmom to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. You heard that right. Go to greenchef.com slash 60coolmom and use code 60coolmom to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. See you soon. Just also a really quick note. If you're loving this content, our podcast with all of our amazing guests. We love sharing their stories. It really is such a joy for us. Then you're going to love the cool mom.co. Make sure to head over there. It is everything that you can think of lifestyle. So we have fashion, food, we have amazing interviews with a lot of other cool moms as well. So check out all of our cool mom co features, shop our merch, do all the things. Check out the cool mom.co. So let's talk about your because yep. you've had all natural births. For every one of your kids yes. or no? Yep. All four. Yep. <laughs> this last one was spicy. <laughs> was it? Okay. So for me, I've always heard this. My first one, same thing, all natural births. 20 hours with my oldest, um, eight hours with my middle, two hours sugar to shit with my third. So how was this one spicy? How was the fourth one? spicy for you Ooh. okay so with the other th with the first three let's just say there was three years in between mm -hmm. this last one was five because I never anticipated I wanted a fourth kid it okay. was kind of a, a Hail Mary <laughs> wait a minute why the Hail Mary why I woke up at 41 and I said Gavin we're not done he's like we're done and I was like no we're not we gotta have a baby I don't know if it was like the last like egg in there being like come on you sound like Issa. You sound like Issa. I'm Gavin. I'm like, no, we're done. Issa's like, we're not done. I'm like, we're done. We're done. Shop closed. Bye. Okay. So the Hail Mary comes through. You have the you your fourth baby. How did how did it go? Um, so fun fact. So I, I guess with my third, I didn't know it at the time, but towards the end of my third, my pubic bone was separating. Your pubic bone was like this. So it was going this. So when you walk, it was like that. So by the last six weeks of my third, like the, my, everything was painful, getting up, stand, you know, sitting, walking, it was nightmare. So I went into my fourth going, I've got to get my pelvic force floor strong and do mm -hmm. everything. So I was really diligent about exercises and strengthening that ar ar area, good or bad, same shit happened again. Um, and I would just say that, you know, my labor was eight hours, but when I went through t transition. Let me back step. I'd also made, I said, I want to be more present during the pain. I want to not go to God as I normally go to. I want to be here. And how am Why? I going to do that? Excuse Why? me. Hold on. Yeah. I just want to interject here. Why? Because when I go to God, I make sounds that are inhuman. And I just use the power of like a dying cow to get through the pain. <laughs> yes. And so I was like, let me be more calm. Like I see on these natural birth, you know, videos on YouTube and just breathe through these contractions or blow my baby out. You even thought this as a third time, mom, this is what I you thought went I've into done your this fourth before. With? I know what to expect. I know it's going to be painful. I, you know, and I just was like, I can do this. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden I became an animal again. And <laughs> I literally thought that this time I wouldn't make it. I mean, it was, I don't want to scare women because I would highly do it again. Right. But it was just way more painful than I thought it could be. And for whatever reason, the midwife was like, once his head and shoulder was out, she was pulling him out, Ooh. which I didn't like. And that hurt more mm -hmm. than just me pushing him out. Mm. So I don't know. It was just a lot. It was a lot. But the minute he's out, like I'm high as a kite and I'm high for like six months. So it's fine. Yeah, it's it's it, listen, I mean, that is the beauty in it. Right. But it's funny you say that because I remember when I was pregnant with my third with Kalik, my youngest, and the doctor said to me, he said, it could either go either way. Your third could either be really painful and really hard because something does happen with your like pelvic floor bones or whatever it is where the baby doesn't come out as like easily or the baby could come out really fast 
and I remember thinking that's 50, 50. weird like what yeah 50 yeah. like that's what that's why so maybe at the fourth the fourth baby you know it switched up the game for you Whew, it was intense I mean that floor was not used to natural births and so I I said later on I was like did I scare everybody <laughs> and the midwife was like, it's good for everyone to hear what it sounds like because everyone is so medicated and everything's so calm that no one knows what to do in those situations and how to help and be, you know, what really annoyed me is there was someone typing on the fucking computer the whole time. No. So in between contractions, you'd hear that click, 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 click. And I'd be like, what notes are you taking? Like, what could you possibly be putting into the computer at this very moment? It was highly wow. annoying. Yeah. So you had it, did you have it at the hospital? You had the babies at the hospital? I did only because in New York with the first three, if something went wrong and you hit traffic, mm -hmm. you know, you are fucked. Like yeah. New York city is no joke. And then here we're actually, um, I really thought long and hard about a home birth and I had met a midwife that I loved. And then my mom, who's again, a hippie was like, please just go to the hospital. You mm -hmm. you're, you're 41. You don't know what could happen. And I was just like, you know what? I I would rather just know that like, I'm not in my ideal environment, but also at home. I don't know if you felt this way or if you labored at home. With my third, I was laboring at home and one kid was like, mommy, I want a waffle. And the other kid was like, mom, are you in pain? And I was like, no, I wouldn't be at peace anyways. Yeah, exactly. They'd be fucking with me. Yeah, no, same with us. We labored at the hospital because at UCLA here, they have a midwifery program. Oh, that's and great. so we labored with the midwifery program at the hospital. So we didn't do it at home for that same reason, though, because I think we were just so nervous if any complications occurred, anything, which I know so many women who have labored at home very healthily, happily. I think it's just a personal choice. And for me, I was just got a little nervous about that point. And I didn't want to feel stress. I didn't want to feel any stress that if anything happened, I would feel an enormous amount of like stress and pressure to like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I have to get there. And then whatever. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't ideal at home, but I hear that girl. I hear that. So, okay. So we have our babies. Now we are having, we have baby number four, little boy, 11 months old. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Um, and you had him at 41. 42, 42, 42. Yeah. What was this one? Was there any differences that you felt from this one as opposed to, let's say your first at 30, 32, 10 years earlier? Ooh, look at you getting all deep with the years. Well, you know, I'm just asking because I, you know, wonder, listen, women, are having kids later in life now, right? Like we're not popping babies out as often as like 22 or 24 when our parents did. Um, yeah. And careers um, are important to us, right? This is the age that we're in with women. And so careers, finding a spouse, you know, there's so many of my friends who haven't even met their person yet. Um, yeah. And wanting to have kids, you know, not like in their forties, not in their thirties or twenties, how is that different? And I know it's going to, the answer is going to be a little bit layered and different with you because you started in thirties. So for yeah. you having a baby at 42 was like nothing. You were like, girl, bye. This is my fourth baby. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, but it's interesting. I think just to find that comparison on what it's like, um, with that 10 year span. So I think it's so multi-layered. I think that at 32, you know, I remember at like two weeks in my brother and my president at the time called me to like a lunch. They're like, you can't get out of the game. You got to go in focus. We can't lose you. And I was just yeah. like, I just had a baby, like, give mm -hmm. me a couple weeks. Um, And so I did end up going back at six weeks part-time and my business was growing and I was having that push pull of like, I want to see my kid. I want to be home for bath time, but like you're needed at work. And so that was, that didn't exist this time. I was literally like, I am taking a full, you know, I took two months off and I'm breaking up my last month. So I think that was different. I definitely bounced while I had more pain initially after the first baby because like a trow, you know, a, a a trough was plowed through you that didn't exist before. <laughs> um, 
and it took a while to heal after my first one, I would say that getting my body back was far easier after the first, after that, you know, time period, it was far easier. I'm still working on pelvic floor issues and diastasis recti and, um, you know, sex is different right now. I mean, talk about it. Other story. But has it, was it different after every kid though? Yeah, it was. I say the first two, the bounce back was very quick. Three and four, three was like, oh, it's taking a little longer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 11 months in and things are still not where they need to be. And when you say taking a little longer, do you mean your desire or your urge or your wanting to have sex? Uh, Both on the physical, like my pelvic floor. I think if I'm being honest, I am so tired right now that my (laughs) desire is very tiny. (laughs) Um, and I, you know, sometimes I'll say to Gab and I'm like, I'm just, I'm overtouched, not by you, <laughs> just by people, but by everybody. Yes. Like I'm just, I'm touched a lot and I don't want to be touched by anybody else. Yes. <laughs> so I'd say that span with this baby has been longer than normal. Mm. Do you, also- we, we talk about it a lot. So Do it's you not also like-, like, you're a mom of four, dude, like, Becky, you're a mom of four. You're not a mom of like one or two anymore. You're a mom of four. No, let me rephrase this. You are a wife, working mother and mom of four. I mean, how that alone. So I can understand not wanting to be touched, right? Not wanting like, okay, listen, I've been touched by every single person in this household at least a hundred times today. I'm bitten on the nipple by a lot. (laughs) I'm good. I'm totally good. I'm okay. Let me just let my body be me for a second with me. Let me find some self-love time with me. (laughs) But also it's like, how do you, I think, and I know this is the question that everyone probably asks and I'm asking because you have one more child than me is where does the, and I hate to use the word juggle or balance. So let me find a different word for this. Where does your, um, daily routine come in right like how do you get through the day in a way where you've given a little bit to everybody because there's a lot of you given a little bit to everybody but then also given a little bit to yourself do those days exist they do and I think that um during the pandemic I was able to finally figure that out because we weren't always going into the office. Um, and so right now, we our morning call starts at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. And so I have an hour between drop-off and my call to do me. So exercise, Pilates, whatever it is. It's where I'm like focused on like just whatever. And I hop on the call and then my day starts. And I have till the school, they're not, we no longer homeschool them. The school they go to in Florida goes till five. Mm. So I- yeah. What? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I see why we're in Florida. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so I I have a babysitter who they love. It's not like they feel like, oh, she stuck us with the babysitter who takes them on whatever extracurriculars, let's say till six. So I have a very full day, 10 mm-hmm. to six to work, to do all the things I need to do. And then my nights can be focused around my kids or go, you know, I went out to dinner with girlfriends last night. So mm-hmm. I think it's about as a mother, you have to constantly put up and figure out the boundaries right. and know that sometimes they are completely collapsed. And then sometimes you can hold them firm and to experiment with boundaries. Cause I will see a lot of moms on Instagram who have like, I, I talk about this woman a lot and I actually love her, but this one person wakes up at like six and then exercises, then makes a whole meal for the family and then goes to work and then goes, has a martini, does the homework with the kids, probably has sex with her husband every night and goes to bed. And I was lamenting over this woman with a facialist and she was like, oh, I do her too. And I was like, how does she do it all? Like she's really doing it all. And she was like, you know, whatever, whatever pharmaceutical drug that's equal to cocaine, that's what she does. And yeah, like, yeah. Oh, exactly. We have exactly. to do to- cocaine to be in bed. Yes. Once Thank I you. Learned that. I was that's like, it. oh, I'm free. I'm free. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? That's so true, though. It's so freaking true. You see it, and you're like, how do these? How how does people like? How do they live this totally full day to day life? 
look amazing doing it, have all the energy in the world, wake up super happy. And you're like, how, how is it possible? But that would make right. sense. I mean, the pharmaceutical version of cocaine is very probably helpful. Yeah, I could, <laughs> Not I, recommend could see, it, but I could see how that works. I'm going to stick with coffee occasionally, yeah. but yeah. we'll see. I'll have my down days, but we'll see. We'll see. I have my two. I, I double <laughs> fist my coffee. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to give up coffee. I really am. I'm trying to give up why? a little bit of caffeine. Why? I'll tell you why, because I went to, um, I'm, I'm, we're getting mammograms now. We're of mammograms. So everybody, women, get your mammograms. What? Here we go. What? What? Okay. What? When you're getting a mammogram. I hate them. You're getting radiation put into your breast. But what are okay? you supposed to do? It's called thermography. What? Okay. Well, tell me about it. What is thermography? <laughs> I would like, yes, as I'm touching my breast constantly right now. Okay. So what you, is thermography? Know, you know, in the film uh, Terminator, when they can heat map the, the alien. Yes. Okay. So there's a machine that exists. That's t 10 feet away from you that heats heat maps your breast. Okay. And if you have signs of anything, there's going to be more heat around that area. And so it's, it's something you have to do consistently. It's every six months because they establish a pattern, right? So before right. this area was green, now it's red. Let's check it out. Then you go get an x-ray. Okay. But it's a way to consistently monitor your breast health without the radiation of a mammogram. So you can do that prior to. Do it every six months. You do it. Same as you would do an ultrasound or a mammogram. Yeah. Or you can do ultrasounds. You know, if they think something suspicious, you do an ultrasound. But I would say to most women, you know, thermography and ultrasounds aren't filling your breasts with radiation. And then you wonder mm. why, like, you know, this people is true. Are, yeah. So this but I, I, I agree with hypnosis, but like there's two steps before you need that. Thermography. Thermography. Yep. This is interesting because I was going to say, I have very dense and cystic breasts. And yep. so now as a woman in my forties, you know, they need to have a baseline, right? Yeah. Like you usually start around this time and they start a baseline of like what you were just saying of what your breast tissue looks like and what is normal for your body. And honestly, Rebecca, I, and I had to call you by your full name because I went in there and I have very small breasts, but the way they like try to pull and plop and like, oh, like all this, like they do this whole stretching thing oh, and then they hurts. push down the machine yes, and then it squishes violent. it into like pancake. And I'm like, oh, my God, violent. this is worse than any like baby biting a nipple or like breastfeeding or anything. This is like crazy the way they do it. So I, I, I am going to try thermography. There we go. Yeah, it definitely exists in LA for sure. I mean, I have to, I have to, I have to figure this out. And I wonder, I mean, if I can do that every six months, that's actually a really great tip. I love yeah, that. Yeah, and it's literally you sitting, and they take the picture front side, and they're not touching you at all. Yeah, that's phenomenal, and yeah. it's probably very pain free. There's no pain. And there's I like no this. Patient. There's literally a camera that takes like a, a heat map image of you. What? This is, yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you. Th You're that's welcome. the biggest tip from today. Thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to try that one. Thank we're not, you. we're not letting those insurance companies take all the money. I mean, is it, in, is it covered by insurance? It can be depending on the provider. I'm just saying with, with a mammogram, I'm sure it's a hefty bill, right? To the I insurance mean, companies. I'm sure it is, but Hey, like you said, if you can do thermography first, then go for it. Yeah. I mean, For that's sure. phenomenal. Okay. So look, this is, that's true because you are very, um, you're very into health and wellness and all these things. What are some of the, what are some of your must, um, some of your must do's for women throughout the year for yourself, for instance, every year you have to make sure you do this. Obviously thermography is one of them. What are some other things that you have to do for your health and care throughout the year? Because you're into this sort of thing. Like every morning, do you take a certain something? Um, do you make sure that once a month you do this? Do you? Yeah. All right. Um, I take my vitamins at night. I don't know if that's a good thing. Why? Some might why? Because I feel like that's my body's time to like refuel and repair. And so let me give it the nutrients it needs. But for some, it keeps them up at night. It doesn't do that to me. Mm -hmm. 
So I highly recommend fish oil, vitamin E, B1, especially E and B1 for like mental, mental health. Um, what else do I take? I take my prenatals. I take iodine. I take a great probiotic called orthobiotic. Um, I exercise every day. I get my, what, what do you, called? what do you do for exercise? I'll either go running or I'll go do Pilates. And I just today signed up and went to a trainer for the first time in six years. But as we age, you might know this, mm -hmm. we lose muscle mass mm -hmm. uh, very quickly. And so it's important to start doing strength training. And I don't want to be like a jiggly old lady. So I'm doing Pilates and I have a trainer now. Okay. And then what else? What were you going to say? You were going to say something else. Oh, you got to get the swab. What is it for? Um, you know, the vagina swab twice a year. Oh, well, yeah. Your pap smear. Thank you. Yep. What else do I do? I try and get a facial once a month. I don't even know if it changes my skin, but I just, <laughs> I love when it's happening to me. I just yeah. love the face toucher. Yeah. The hands. The um, only thing I don't, I can't do with facials is the extractions. Why? They hurt. I'm like, no, I didn't come here for this. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> nope. Thank you. Bye. We're done here. No, just touch me all day. Don't extract okay. anything. I don't care. It can stay. It can stay in the pores. I don't <laughs> care. Just let it stay. The extractions. No, thank you. Everything else I'm good with. Okay. All right. That's fair. I like a, an extraction. If there's like a big one that I can't get to. Well, sure. Maybe, but I don't know. Even then I'm like, it'll come out eventually. I'm good. Oh my God. <laughs> What else do I do for health? Um, oh, and I take this supplement. Um, it's called Perfect Amino. It's a complete mm -hmm. amino acid that your body uses as 99% protein. Mm -hmm. So like today I took 10 pills, but it was 35 grams of protein. So we also need a lot of protein and we don't want to necessarily eat it. So these this is a an incredible way to get it. 10 pills. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you're taking what, 20 vitamins a day? But I'm also breastfeeding, you know, I need to do this stuff because I'm getting sucked dry of nutrients. I need to replenish. Yeah. Constantly. Do you do this when you're not breastfeeding? I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm pretty yeah. religious about it. I just stopped for two weeks because I couldn't find my vitamins in this move we did. And, um, yeah. Wow. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. but taking vitamins is very difficult for me. Why? You don't like the pills? Yeah. I'm not into the pills. It's also the routine of it is very difficult. You what if know? it was a powder? I, maybe, but then it's like the aftertaste, but you know, even more so than that, it's, um, I don't know why I think would I know I need to take vitamins. Cause I know as I get older, my nutrients need to be, and the foods that we eat aren't giving us the nutrients that we need and our body really needs. That's the big thing for me, even though I eat pretty healthy and I try to like grow my own greens and I try and do all these things, the nutrients we have in our soils and like every, it's just not nearly enough of what our body needs. Yeah. So I know that mentally, but I think for me this year is going to be, and of course my husband literally shoving them down my throat is literally going to be getting into a habit of taking vitamins and all that stuff. I'm starting with one multivitamin though. That's okay. all I can do right now. So when you say I take, you take 20 vitamins a day for me, my whole, like in my brain, I'm like, my mouth is like wide open. I'm like, oh, but I'm trying my to be, I'm trying to be like cool with many. you. And this many, and she like puts them all in her mouth at once. And I'm in awe of her. Wow. Yeah. That's so phenomenal. I guess I'm used to seeing it in my life. Well, just for everybody, we're going to get Becky's full vitamin breakdown for you. We're going to put it on the blog just so everyone knows what Becky takes every day for, for those out there who would like to mimic what Becky's uh, beautiful health routine <laughs> is in life. All right. So I know we have a couple more minutes and there's something that I want to do with you. And this okay. is the first time that I'm doing this with anybody. Oh, so God. I am popping cherries over here. Me Pop and it. yours. Here we go. I'm going to play a game with you. Never have I ever. Okay. So we're going to put up our 10 fingers. Okay. And if there is something that you relate to, or you feel like you have done this, a finger goes down. If I have done it. That you have done it. Okay. Okay. Never have I ever tasted my placenta. 
Well, if I ate it, does it count? I didn't yeah. taste it. Okay. Ate it. Ate it. Taste it. Uh, never have I ever pumped milk in a public bathroom. Okay. Never have I ever made out with your partner when your baby was in the room. All the time. Yeah. Okay, good. This is okay. So we're even right now. We're even right uh -oh. now. We're even. I'm okay. going to give you a never have I ever. That's going to make you think I'm a really crazy. Do it. Go insert yours now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so my husband and I are doing it the other night, and my baby sleeps in the bed with us. So uh -huh. he's always shoved to the other side of the bed, and then we're on one side getting frisky. Yeah. And I kid you not, my husband's like, he just put his hand on my leg. Like, I can't focus. Like, the baby went, Ooh. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> no. Put down, a, put down a finger. Never, never have I ever my baby touched me while we were getting frisky. <laughs> Okay. 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 Never have I ever tasted my own breast milk. Okay. I, but how I mean, did you taste it? In a cup or on your breast? I don't know how to get to my breast from this angle. <laughs> I mean, maybe I've squirted into my mouth. Maybe I could see that. But it was probably me like more so like finger tasting, like yeah. touching. Okay. That and I don't think I've drank it. I don't think I've okay. ever drank it out of it. And you? And you, Becky? Want to know a fun story? <laughs> I do. I really, really do. Okay. Sadly, my breasts are so saggy and so big. They they can go up here. But I remember my battery died. I was like on an airplane. I was feeling the beginnings of a block duct and I panicked. And I was like, how am I going to get this milk out? And then I was like, well, let me see if they go up to my mouth. And I kid you not, I got it out. I got the clogged duct out by sucking your own breast I know it sounds weird but <laughs> what are you gonna do you know what it doesn't sound as weird as literally I was and this is public knowledge so anyone who wants to go back and watch the episode is more than welcome to uh freckled foodie uh her podcast uh I was interviewing her she is amazing Cameron Rogers amazing woman she just had a baby lives in New York. And she was saying to me, I was like telling her about this hot topic of this lady and husband, the husband still breastfeeds from the lady, from the mom, right? Like the husband breastfeeds yeah. the wife. Right. And so I was like, has that like ever, have you ever done that? And she was like, are you kidding? My husband literally, I had to breastfeed him to get out a clogged duck. Oh yeah. We've done that. I, that happened in a club in Paris. I was like, babe, we're going into the bathroom and you got to help a sister out. Like I, we are out. I don't have my pump. Yep. This is a thing. This is a thing. I think so many more couples can relate to this than probably we even know. Well, I just have to say sometimes, especially in the beginning, your, your child suck is not that strong and you're engorged and you're, you're, you need someone to like really get it out. Get out. Yeah. Get it out. This is true. This is true. Is that, I, is that a, do I get to put that down or am I still at six? I don't no, know. No, you're still at six. Hold on. Wait okay. a minute. How did you get to six? We're not at the same number. You're a five. Okay, good. Yeah, you're a five. Okay. Um, Have you ever breastfed? Well, no, this is, I, I feel like we already did that. Have you ever lied about your kid's age to get a discount? No, but I've lied about their age to like at 13 you can do the harder ropes course so I've lied to like get them to do stuff does that count yeah I don't know I, I feel like I just lied about Cleek's age to get the discount I was like he's not six he's not five what are you even talking okay. about okay okay I've done that um, um have you ever forgotten your kid's birthday no I don't think I have either I mean I've gone right up to the moment though like right up to the moment, like, yeah, damn, yeah. it's tomorrow. Are you kidding? Yeah. Literally one of my kids' birthday is in like two days. And just the other day I looked up and it was like, shit, it's already in two days. Get ready. Okay. okay. Um, have I ever lied to another mom to make yourself feel better? Ooh, about mom stuff? I don't know. Just anything. Have you ever lied to another mom to make yourself feel better or to even make yourself look better? Like, I'm not that bad of a mom. I've never done that. I don't lie about that stuff to make myself feel better. Have you ever sent your kid to sit school sick, knowing they were sick? 
Yes. Yes, I have. Have you ever tricked your kids into a, giving you a massage? No, because they suck at it. <laughs> and my, mine I have, but it only lasts for like two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. Okay. That's all I got. Have you ever, have you ever, um, well, I already said breastfed anyone other than your kids. Um, no, you didn't. Have... When I have, I breastfed another, another, my friend's kid. Oh, okay. There you go. Put one down. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's all I got. I think that's all I got. You got two left. I have, how many do I have? Four, four and two. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's interesting. I like that. I like this game. I like that game. Um, Becky, thank you so much for coming on. Honestly, I am excited to start this new year off with you as my guest. I've been wanting to get you on forever. And I'm so excited that we could have this conversation with you today. Well, I love you. I love seeing you. And I'm so glad that we got to share so openly. I, I there are things on this podcast I've never told anybody. So now we're telling the world. <laughs> There you go. You heard it here first from Rebecca Minkoff. Oh <laughs> I love it. I'll see you soon. I love you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye.